Okay, so now we're going to map some information dynamically to our individual post type for our course holes. So I give you a look at the index page. So here we've got the index. And when I look at a particular hole, so I look at hole three here, you can see that we've got hole three is sponsored by with the signs you see sponsor. This is an image that's picked up dynamically along with the uh, T box sign that we have dynamically in there. Then we have the different ratings here. All of these, I actually had to change that from my previous video. I was using a group, but Cadence didn't like that. Um, we'll show you where that setting is. So all these distances here are picked up. And then I've got my slope rating. Then we have the photo gallery here, the photo guide. All of this is dynamically populated from the ACF field. And then the flyover video with the hero. And when you click play there, the video shows up for the flyover drone video. So that's what we're wanting to populate. So let's take a look at hole one and I haven't put anything in here yet. So here we've got our um, T distance and all that sort of stuff. So um, what I'll do is just put some T distances in here. Um, I'll just make these up for now. And we're just gonna add the hero image in. So I've got some hero images here. We will take, I think that one there looks pretty good for the hero shot. That shows the full length of the hole. And then of course, we've got our gallery images down there as well. So just click update. Okay, so now what we'll do is if I take a look at what I designed over here, I'm just gonna copy some sections out. I'll talk you through the section first of all for the header. We're not gonna make that step by step. But you can see, first of all, I've got an advanced image here. And when I click on that and look at the image, you can see that this black box over on the side, in the sidebar on the right hand side, says dynamic image. If I click on that, we can see that that is mapped to the post custom field T box sign. So that's how that gets populated. The alt text will be pulled directly from the image itself. Then I've got the header over here in the next section. And here we can see that there's some text that's blue underlined. And if I click on that, because it's blue underlined, it says that it's dynamic and that's the current post name. So the post name goes there in that section. Same as down here, I've got hole three, but on this one here, we've got that par field that we had. All right, so it's the current post data there. So if I highlight it, you can see that that's the custom field. And then we've got the same with all these different T markers here where I've just done a list and set them all to different colors. And then I've got the slope rating there that pulls in the slope rating field. So you can see there that we've got the slope rating field right there. So that whole section, I can copy that. And then when I paste it here, you'll see that it all comes over with the same data. But when I update, and now I'm gonna view the hole, what happens? Well, it's all changed over. You'll see that I've got Parks Concrete before we had signs you see. This was pulled from the dynamic field. The hole one is there, the title, hole one, par three, all those different values there for the distances. I've got a slope rating of zero, I've got the image. So all that information gets pulled in. Next up, let's go ahead and we'll add another section to my whole one. So I've gone back to edit it now and it still for some reason shows this old data. Got no idea why, I think it's got something to do with some sort of JavaScript cache, I'm not sure. Um, just some sort of minor bug. Well, let's go ahead and say add after and then I'll add a row layout there. And we're just gonna see inside the section, we'll do a single section, just like so. And then inside of this, we're going to use the advanced gallery from Cadence. Now inside here, this is a little bit different because we're populating this from the gallery field. So further down, I have a gallery field of photos and we're populating that. So I click there and say, enable dynamic gallery. Now this confused me a little bit when I first did this because nothing happens, <laughs> you know, it, it didn't seem to do anything. So what I had to do is I went over into the sidebar 
and clicked on dynamic gallery and then the field shows up inside the content it doesn't so it's not mapped to anything yet so then i have to say post custom field current post and then photos and then bam it all comes up so that's how you get that that gallery to work from there i set it to five um, but at that point when i updated it and viewed it i didn't have popovers so we also want to do popovers so i go into link settings on this one here and say link to media file link triggers lightbox down there and then show captions in lightbox then click update that's how you add a gallery field and that now all works as expected um, you can also add style and image filters and image shadows whatever it is that you want other types of defaults but that's how we go ahead and add that uh, particular field so let's view that and you'll see all those images are now there and we've got the light box so that's all pretty good too so i'll just go ahead and let's copy the uh the video section and i'll go to edit the whole uh, over to here again uh add after and in that paragraph area i just paste and then i've got my flyover video and again, the title for some reason, you know, I can say update dynamic content and then it updates inside this preview. Um, this was a tricky one. So with the video, I had to make sure that I had um, a hero image as well. If you don't have a hero image, then it won't pull the thumbnail automatically from the YouTube video. So I had to set a hero image. So further down here, I've now got my whole hero image and that's what's being used up there. So that all looks pretty good too. The other thing I want to do is just copy my title. So I'll say copy this for my whole on there. And then go ahead into the section and then say add before like that. Click the area, paste. And again, update the dynamic field. So there we go. Slope rating. Do I have a slope rating on this? It's there so let's just go three update like that so any of those fields you can click the update and it will bring in the new value but if you don't press it it'll just take whatever it had before so that's just an important thing to be aware of that you have to click that update dynamic content like that um, and as soon as you do everything seems to work quite well so we click update from there and there we go. So now I've got this template that I can just paste in. So the way I go about doing that is I select all of my rows like so, click on the dot and then the three dots and then say copy blocks. And then I can paste it into all of my items moving ahead. There's one other thing I do have to do and that is use the excerpt. So down here, I'm using the excerpt to write down the little bit of text that I want. And that's actually 189 meters, so 189 M like that. That's 189 there. 185, 175, that's correct. And then the last value was 173, 173. Click update, and there we go. Now the reason why we do this is so that those all that data is dynamically populated and it means that moving ahead, I don't have to think about my layouts. I can just paste those in or I can even save them as a pattern or something like that. So I can say create pattern here, create that as a pattern and use that on those pages really easily to paste in. It saves you a hell, heck of a lot of time. And it means that if you go and update things, you don't have to muck around with trying to click inside blocks and potentially making a mistake. You can just go straight down to your ACF fields and go and change things. So if I change that to a par four, up here it will change to a par four and I don't have to do anything else. So that's currently par three there, a whole one. So update that there, yeah. So you can see how that works. Um, it's all really great in the way that, that it just pulls everything over. So highly recommend you become more familiar with how to use ACF fields and how to map them over. Um, but this has saved me a lot of time 
And now when I go to course, that excerpt area is just underneath here. So you can see that that's just under there. So this listing here on hole two doesn't have an excerpt, so it's taken the content from the page, which we don't want. So I'll go ahead and edit that page and you'll see how the excerpt works. So here you can see I don't have an excerpt. So if I then say par four, 405 amp, 405 meters, and then click update from there, view the whole, click on course, and there we go, the excerpts all now look much better. So you can see hole one's a par three at 189 meters, hole two's a par four at 405 meters, hole three, par five, 511. You get the idea. I'll go ahead and add in the rest of these so that we get up to 18 holes with the full guide of the course. And of course, that means then that everything is dynamically populated and easy to manage into the future. So I hope that helps you understand a bit more about how to use ACF fields. Um, a couple of things that I'll highlight just before I finish up. And that is if we go into the ACF field groups and look at this item here, you'll notice that when you select drop downs, there's these items at the top here, um, which we would call basic items. All the basic items work well from what I've found so far with um, Cadence. Image works good, file I've not used. The O embed didn't work for me. So I was trying to O embed into the video player. That didn't work. I had to have a URL. So just be keep in mind that you know when you're doing a flyover video or a video that you're dynamically doing, I had to use URL. I couldn't use the embed method. So um, try the different fields out, see how you go with them. Uh, radio buttons seem to be okay. The other thing as well that I'd done before is all of these blue, these T distances. So the places that people tee off when they're playing golf, I'd put them inside a group and I couldn't access those from the group into the dynamic fields within Cadence. So another thing as well, watch out for those group fields or anything like that. You may not be able to get it to populate the way that you want. So I hope that helps you. Enjoy your ACF stuff. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Thank you.